morning and warm welcome to online analysis of postgraduate teaching program and Zoom platform. Sponsored by Akula and hosted by A1 Logics and simultaneously aired by Anastasia TV. Today we are having two important topics on uh, total intravenous anesthesia. The first topic is on principles of total intravenous anesthesia, the basic pharmacokinetics and TCA that will be delivered by Dr. Shwet Kumar sir. He is uh, working as a professor and head of department of anesthesiology, Subway Institute of Medical Sciences, Simoga. His area of interest is total intravenous anesthesia, low flow anesthesia and honorable blocks. He has published more than 21 uh, publications in the international journals and he is an honorary secretary of ISA Karnataka. He has received many awards like ISA National Proficiency Award in 2021, ISA National Public Awareness Award in 2021. He is the right person to talk on this subject since he is using the TC pumps in his routine practice. Welcome you uh, to on our, on our online anesthesia platform, sir. Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Edward, sir. Uh, uh, at this, uh, uh, at the outset, I'd like to thank uh, uh, the team, online anesthesia team, uh, Dr. Edward uh, Johnson. Um, good morning to all. And uh, I congratulate Dr. Edward Johnson for completing a 50 uh, online webinars uh, uh, for the benefit of uh, postgraduates. So topic given to me is uh, principle and practice of uh, total intravenous anesthesia. I'll be covering uh, pharmacokinetics and basics of uh, target control infusion pumps. I can, uh, uh, audible? I am audible? Sir, audible. Okay. So I do not have any relevant financial uh, relationship with the commercial interest to disclose. So TCA, as we presume, is not a very complex thing. It's uh, I submit that uh, uh, the TCA is a very costly and TCA we require to be uh, trained uh, uh, separately to practice a target control infusion. I would say the target control infusion is a part of a, a post-graduation program now, nowadays. As per NAPFI, all the post-graduates should be uh, trained in a, a, how to use the T1 T, a target control infusion. So uh, I will be covering about the basics of target control infusion pumps. Uh, bed principle this is the main uh, principle, which uh, based on the three compartmental uh, model. The effect was as a plasma site targeting, uh, how, to, uh, how these are different from each other. The various uh, target control infusion pharmacokinetic models which are available for uh, various drugs uh, commercially. And uh, very important thing is uh, what is a context sensitive of life and how it is different from a regular uh, of life. So what we regularly we find this uh, a vaporizer which are integrated to a workstations, but we don't find a target control infusion pumps which are uh, integrated, at least now integrated to a workstations. So the, uh, in the future, it is possible to integrate a target control infusion. Even it is possible to integrate uh, a target control infusion pumps to a workstation along with the uh, uh, depth of anesthesia monitoring where we can administer a closed loop uh, uh, target control uh, infusion to the patients where which will minimize the uh, awareness during surgery, uh, especially during a uh, total intravenous anesthesia. So this has to change. The integration of uh, a TCA pumps to the uh, a workstation is a future of uh, anesthesia, general anesthesia. So what is a, a, a TVA TCA pumps? These are uh, nothing but a, uh, uh, this automates the dosing of intravenous drugs during anesthesia by coding to a certain a pharmacokinetic model into a computer program and linking it to an electronic pump modified to accept computerized commands, delivery according to the drug specific uh, pharmacokinetic profile, which can be achieved. Nowadays, the pharmacokinetic and as well as a pharmacodynamic uh, profiles are also available. Uh, nowadays, the recent models like Elevel models, which have come up with a pharmacokinetic as well as a pharmacodynamic uh, uh, models. So what are the different parts of uh, target control infusion pumps? It has a user interface, which is uh, similar to that of any syringe pumps. And it has a microprocessor with the pharmacokinetic software, infusion pumps, which delivers up to 1,200 ml per hour, which is very important because we need to induce a patient rapidly. If the uh, delivery rates are, if it is less, then the induction will take a longer time. So that's why uh, maximum infusion rate in a most of the uh, target control infusion 
pumps is 1200 ml per hour and it also has a visual audi audible visual and audible safety system and alarms which is very important because in case of a occlusions and kinking uh, and uh, disconnections we know, need to know that uh, whether the patient is uh, delivered with the appropriate amount of drug or uh, drug has been uh, 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 been uh, not delivered because otherwise because entire uh, anesthesia is dependent on the uh, the a line which is connected to the vein. If there is a disconnection, patients will be uh, aware, uh, awareness will uh, increase. That's why there should be a visual and audible safety systems which will uh, able to detect occlusions or disconnections. And also it's important to identify uh, 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 when the syringe is getting empty. And most of the times KVO has to be off. Know your uh, vein open has to be switched off in case of a target control infusion pump because when a KVO is used, the minimum amount of the drug is uh, uh, infused to maintain the patency of the uh, veins. If the KVO is on, then the patient will be aware in case of target control uh, in, uh, target control infusion TVA. So KVO is be switched off in whenever we use uh, TCA TVA. So this looks like. Uh, uh, TCA pumps looks like any other syringe pumps, but there are certain differences. So you can see there is a, this is a, a what is the uh, effect set uh, target which has been achieved. So this is the target which has been set. So this is, it will say that uh, whether the, what is the plasma concentration, what is the amount of the drug which has been infused per minute or per hour, and what is the time lapsed and what is the time taken for the recovery of the patient to one mic or whatever the uh, concentration we set. Then you can see here the graph. This particular example, uh, uh, the effect site uh, targeting has been used. That's why the plasma, there is a plasma overshoot. I'll be discussing about uh, what is the effect site targeting and what is the plasma site targeting. In the plasma site targeting, there won't be any plasma overshoot. In the effect site targeting, there is a plasma overshoot. You can see here, there is a overshoot of the uh, plasma overshoot above the set target. So this is the user interfere where you can alter the amount of the drug which has been set. What is the target which has been set? You can alter in between the, uh, uh, during the surgery based on the depth of anesthesia. If there, there is a increased uh, uh, depth, we can decrease the dose of a target. You can, in case of there is awareness, we can increase the dose of the target. Or in case of, even in case of a slow induction, we can start with one microgram. In case of profile, we can slowly go and increase uh, based on the hemodynamic uh, uh, status and also the depth of anesthesia. So the basic uh, principle, which uh, <coughs> sorry, uh, <coughs> any target control infusion pumps are a TVA is based on the uh, bed principle that is a bolus elimination and transfer principle. This is based on the uh, three compartmental models. Now we can say that there is a fourth compartment that is a FX side compartment. I will be discussing about that target. When you give a bolus medication or infusion, it will first it will fill into the central compartment. So when, you say, uh, when the central compartment is uh, filled, then it will equilibrate with the rapid equilibrium compartment that is a muscle-rich uh, V2 compartment. We call it as mus muscle, uh, the uh, perfusion-rich muscle compartment, then the slow equilibrium with the fat compartment. So meanwhile, there's a, another compartment that is FX site, which is a, uh, actually a, a site of interest or where we uh, 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 the action mechanism action will occur. That is the central uh, nervous system. There's a, that depends on the, this is a negligible compartment. This is uh, depends on the KE0. The, if the KE0 is a fast, then the uh, FX site equilibrium will be achieved faster. So after some time, what happens, this equilibrium after, in case of profile, it takes minimum uh, 25 uh, hours to equilibrate with each, uh, each compartment. Then the amount of the drug required to be uh, delivered will be based on the only metabolism and the elimination. <coughs> so, uh, as I told, basic principle of TCA, TCA pumps calculates the bolus dose uh, and speed of subsequent uh, infusion required to maintain the target plasma concentration. So initial bolus dose will fill up the uh, plasma uh, targeting, that is the plus V1 compartment. Then also it will equilibrate with the FX side targeting. Then further infusion will maintain this equilibrium uh, between the various compartments. These calculations are occurs every 10 seconds, which is impossible in a regular syringe pumps. So, and the infusion rates are adjusted until the plasma or FX rate concentration is achieved. The diffusion of drug from a plasma to a brain occurs exponentially with a first order uh, 
a constant that is a k0 if the k0 is a faster then the uh, the uh, equilibrium achieved between the fx site concentration uh, fx site uh, and the pl plasma will be faster so why we have to use we have been using in a post graduate days we have been using this intermittent bolus of a profile continuous infusion of a fixed doses why we have to use the uh, target control infusion at present suppose when you use a, a intermittent dose you can see here there is a, a peak then followed by another again there is a peak followed by another then it goes on increases then peak goes on increases as we give a intermittent bolus then it will be more than a therapeutic range so initially it will be less than the therapeutic range so patient will be aware so over a period of time this the peak will be more than a therapeutic range then it will cause the over dosing of a drug and increase the depth of anesthesia and associated immunogenic consequences and delayed recovery so what happens if you give a, a fixed rate of infusion suppose 1 mg per kg per hour like that <clears throat> if you give a infusion like this then what happens is there will be a slow reach of a therapeutic range then initial uh, part their patient will be aware then over a period of time the therapeutic it will be overshoot the therapeutic range then the patient will have a hemodynamic alterations most of the times this will cause a, a awareness during anesthesia when you give a fixed dose infusion then then over if you infuse for a longer time then there will be a delayed recovery uh, from the anesthesia so uh, the TCA is important instead of intermittent or continuous infusion of fixed dose uh, therapeutic uh, drug for a, to achieve the therapeutic concentration. So you can see here. So initially, if you they will be aware, then the, as a, as the duration increases, infusion duration increases, then there will be amount of the con plasma concentration will overshoot the therapeutic range. You can see this in the example just. Uh, this is taken from a Eurosiva. Uh, this is a Society of Intravenous Anesthesia, European Society of Intravenous Anesthesia. So I will not be covering about a MARSH model. I will just directly go to the uh, simple infusion. What happens if you give a, a simple infusion to a patient? Okay, you can see this is based on the uh, three compartment model. Uh, there is a uh, one, uh, there is a V1, that is a vas uh, the plasma con compartment. This is the muscle rich compartment, this is a fat rich compartment. When you start infusing, the plasma concentration will increase, then slowly equilibrate with the uh, vessel rich uh, uh, muscle compartment, then uh, very slowly with the fat compartment. And there is also amount of drug which will be eliminated over a period of time. So. So the plasma concentration will be the determinant which will uh, determine the depth of anesthesia, not the, uh, the V2 or V3 compartment. So as the infusion increases over a period of time, the plasma concentration goes on increases. And meanwhile, the V2, uh, that is a muscle rich uh, compartment and a fat rich compartment also, uh, meanwhile, equ equilibrates. But the equilibration of a, a, a profile uh, requires nearly a 25 hours. Suppose if you see this, the 6.1 microgram of profile has been uh, maintained in a three compartment, but it has taken nearly a, a 25 hours to equilibrate with each compartment. So we need not confuse with the uh, uh, two. Uh, so we don't require to achieve a steady state level in all the compartment. What is important is the, what is the amount of drug which has been achieved in uh, the plasma concentration, which will uh, determine the effect site uh, uh, targeting or effect site uh, compartment. So when you stop this uh, drug, uh, so the elimination will take place. The meanwhile, the amount of the drug which will also decreases from V2 and V3 compartment. But what is important, we should not get confused that the amount of drug which is present in the plasma compartment is very important rather than the, the amount of uh, drug which is uh, present in V2 or V3. Those, this will not interfere with the recovery of the patient because this will take a longer time to decrease from the uh, uh, V2 or V3, but the plasma uh, concentration will decrease very rapidly. So I'll be discussing this uh, in a, when, you, when I discuss about the context sensitive of time. Okay. Sorry. 
So uh, uh, there is another technique which was uh, very commonly used. Uh, that was a, a, a Bristol profile infusion model. That's initially the manual bolus was given uh, to fill the central compartment. One mg per kg was given to fill the central compartment, followed by a, a 10 mg per kg per hour was given. That usually will fill the B2 compartment. Then, uh, uh, then 8 mg per kg per hour was given for next 10 minutes to fill the, uh, not to fill, but to equilibrate, uh, to uh, maintain the transfer between the B2 and V3 compartment. Then subsequent infusion was given at 6 mg per kg per hour. So this was followed very commonly before the advent of uh, uh, TCA pumps in 1997. But the problem with this is not all the patients are equal. Uh, even though they have a same weight, same uh, height, but their body composition will be vary. Suppose in the left, you can see this uh, muscle mass is around 20 kg, even though patient is same, uh, the 52 kg weight and the uh, same height, but fat is 16 kg. Contrarily, you can see this in the right side of the uh, this thing, you can see there is a Mus uh, muscle mass is uh, 23 kg, but fat mass is 13 kg. Even though patient has same BMI, same height, same weight, the body composition vary. So if you give a fixed rate of infusion over a period of time, the distribution between a V2 and V3 varies and the recovery patterns also varies. So this is not suitable for uh, uh, regular use of a <coughs> profile uh, maintained anesthesia. So the DC, what is the ideal thing is a target control infusion. So if you are using a, a, a Bristol model, it's ideal to use the depth of anesthesia monitoring where you can alter the, mildly alter the cons, uh, infusion instead of 6 mg per kg per hour, you can uh, decrease the infusion based on the depth of anesthesia. So nowadays, the, it has come down, the, the only used in the center where the TCA pumps are not available. So already I mentioned the its main the TCA pumps are Ativa is mainly based on the bed principle that is bolus where you fill the V1 compartment then elimination then the transfer between the V1 to V2 or V1 to V3 compartment. So you can see that this is a FX site targeting. Uh, I'll be discussing about FX, what is FX site targeting. You, initially you give suppose you have set a FX site targeting of uh, 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 to a three microgram. You initially you see there is a overshoot of a a plasma concentration followed by a steady state level. Then again, you have increased the FX site target to a six microgram. Then there again, there is a overshoot of a, a, a plasma concentration. Again, there will reach a equilibrium between a plasma uh, plasma concentration and FX site target uh, concentration. Then when you stop the drug, the both plasma concentration and the FX site concentration comes down. This is how the FX site targeting works. So this is the a steady state uh, level between the FX site and the plasma site targeting. The plasma concentration is the, as you know, the drug concentration, which is present in a plasma, that is a V1 compartment. FX site is a site of action to produce effect, uh, expected clinical effects. So the our site of interest is a brain, uh, that is a CNS. So TTP is a time to uh, a, a peak effect. That is a time required when you give a, a bolus dose of a profile or any other drug. What is the time required to achieve a FX effect on the central nervous system to produce unconsciousness or a sedation, whatever you plan. So that is called as time to peak effect. This is depends on the constant that is Ke0. So if there is a faster the constant, then the uh, drug will achieve equilibrium with the FX set faster. So the one more thing, very important is the, what is con a contact sensitive half time. This is a time taken from the plasma concentration of a drug to decline by a 50% after infusion of a designated to maintain a steady state. So as compared to the regular half life, when you give an infusion for a prolonged time, so what is the time taken by a, a plasma concentration to decrease by a 50%? So that will called as contact sensitive half time. The drug which are suitable for a, a, to a target control infusion is uh, the drug which has a lower uh, contact sensitive half time. If you have a lower contact sensitive half time, the the plasma concentration, when you stop it, it will uh, decline very fast and the patient required from the anesthesia is faster. So coming to a plasma site versus FX site targeting, the plasma site targeting, plasma concentration never overshoot. So your target is a, what is the plasma concentration, whether it is two mics, whether four mics or five mics, whatever you said, that is the, your target. In case of FX site targeting, the plasma concentration to reach FX site uh, target quick, uh, onset and offset. So it usually overshoots. In FX site targeting, the target is not a plasma concentration. Target is a FX site that is a brain. So there will be a 
the plasma concentration varies or usually overshoots in case of effect size targeting. So uh, in case of plasma targeting at a steady state, plasma is equal to FX site. Usually after some time, based on the KE0, the plasma concentration and FX site concentration will be at a steady state. <clears throat> in FX site is based on the, what is pharmacodynamic effects uh, which are produced? How to calculate the FX site targeting? Usually it will be done either with the clinically by, uh, by uh, they have done a study clinically uh, uh, by measuring the depth of anesthesia or a time to uh, uh, reach unconsciousness or a sedation based on that, they have calculated the KE0. So usually plasma site targeting as there won't be a overshoot, it will be a slow onset and offset. In a plasma, uh, in case of FX site targeting, usually plasma concentration overshoots. Uh, so to quickly achieve a target, FX site uh, target, so the onset will be faster and offset is also faster. And the hemodynamic uh, disturbance are, uh, uh, will be a much common in case of uh, FX site targeting because there will be a, a plasma overshoot. Even if you set a target of a four microgram of FX, uh, FX site targeting, the sometimes the concentrate plasma concentration may reach up to a, a 12 microgram or 13 micrograms. So that's why uh, their chances of hemodynamic uh, perturbations will be much common in FX site targeting. Whenever you use, use the FX site targeting, you have to start with the uh, lower uh, target, then gradually increase to a, a, a higher target based on the patient response, except in case of a rapid sequence uh, intubation. So you see here in the graph, uh, you can see here, this uh, left side is a plasma uh, TCA, this uh, right side is a FX site uh, uh, TCA. In the left side, you can see the, the plasma concentration and the target never overshoots. So green color is a FX site targeting. It takes a longer time to achieve a, a, a FX site uh, a steady state. You can see this, it takes a longer time. The amount of a uh, profile administered also will be less in case of a plasma, uh, plasma uh, TCA. Here you can see this a red line and orange lines. These are a, a plasma concentration and plasma target, and it's a FX site target. You can see there is a plasma overshoot there's a red color, there is an overshoot of plasma target. You can read it has reached almost to 11 microgram. And the uh, time taken to reach FX site target is much lesser. So FX site uh, targeting, the time taken to reach a, a FX site will be much lesser, uh, lesser and uh, patient will be, a, a, it produces more faster uh, um, effect. Uh, our patient will be more uh, unconscious or it produces a faster uh, decrease in the depth of anesthesia when you use the FX site targeting. The, but amount of the drug which will be used in FX site targeting will be a faster, higher. Okay. So there are various models which are available. I'll first I'll discuss with the pro, what are the target control models, uh, infusion models which are available for a profile. So there are mainly uh, four models, uh, uh, Marsh model and Snyder models which are commonly used for uh, adults and the Qatari and pet fusion models which are used for uh, pediatrics. In case of a, a certain parameters are fixed parameters, certain parameters are variable parameters, and it depends on either weight or weight with other parameters are fixed. In case of Marsh models, all rates are constants. So the, all the rates are constant, that is uh, K1 to the, uh, the distribution between the V1 to V2 compartment, V1 to V3 compartment, and elimination constant and K0, these are all fixed, uh, com this thing. Variable parameters are V1, V2, and V3. These are variable. These are varies with the weight of the patient. So V1 will increase with the weight of the patient. V2 will increase with the weight of the patient. V3 will increase with the weight of the patient. In a normally in a 70 kg patient, so V1 will be approximately 15.9 if you fix a, a target uh, a plasma target of four microgram. But in case of Snyder model, so V1 is a fixed that is 4.7 liters. The V3 and uh, the constant between the V1 to V3 and V1, uh, V3 to V1 are uh, fixed means irrespective of the patient, V1 is 4.7 liters. So it cannot be used for a pediatric patients. So V1 is always uh, uh, fixed. So we can't use it for a pediatric patient, but certain variable parameters like V2 and a distribution between a constant uh, a distribution between a V1 to V2, V2 to V1 and elimination of life are a variable, uh, variable. These are based on the age, uh, lean body mass and gender of the patient. So you have to understand. So 
So in a MOS model, the rates are fixed. In case of Snyder model, V1 and V3 are fixed. Uh, in case of a MOS model, V1, V2 and V3 are variable. These are based on the weight of the patient. In Snyder model, V2 and the constant between uh, V1 to V2, V2 to V1 and the elimination constants are variable. These are based on the age, lean body mass and the gender of the patient. Coming to a, a Cataria and a pet fusion models, these are suitable for uh, pediatrics. These are the uh, commonly available models. Except nowadays, elevated model also came up uh, even for a pediatric patients. Uh, these two models, uh, uh, these are almost similar to the MOSH models. These are not like a Snyder models. These are again a plasma targeting. So I forgot one more thing. The MOSH is suitable for a plasma targeting. Snyder is uh, usually suitable for uh, uh, FX site targeting. In case of Cataria model, the all rates are constant except elimination of life. And uh, variable uh, parameters are V1 uh, to V3 and uh, elimination uh, constant. These are based on the weight of the patient because it's very important. <coughs> the as the weight of the patient increases in a pediatrics, the compartment size also increases. So especially the plasma concentrate uh, compartment also increases. V two increases and V three also increases uh, with the weight of the uh, pediatric patients. In pet fusion uh, models, all rates are constant, and the variables are similar to the Cataria model. V one to V three are the variable. This also based on the weight of the uh, patient. So we want to compartment V1 to V3. This varies with the weight of the uh, uh, baby or uh, uh, pediatric uh, patients. So nowadays, Cataria, Petfuser, and Elevate models, which are available for a pediatric models, MOSH model, and Snyder models, which are available for a, a adult patient. So coming to a little details about a, a different commonly used uh, adult models, that's a MOSH and a Snyder models. The MOSH model ignores the age. Uh, V1 to V3 increases linearly with the weight. So, uh, which is actually is not a, a, a pharma, uh, it's not based on the pharmacokinetic because not all the patients, the V1 compartment will increases or V2 compartment will increases linearly. It may be varies based, based on the body composition. So, the MOSH is less robust patients better start with a lower concentration because uh, normally in a 70 kg person with uh, when you set a target of 4 microgram the amount of v1 compartment size will be approximately say 15.9 so liters so it will deliver a higher concentration of drug when you use the mass model with the plasma targeting so that's why when you less robust patient patients with the uh, critically ill patients or patients or bleeding patients or uh, elderly patients are patients with the cardiac diseases where they won't tolerate the uh, hypotension, then you have to start with the uh, uh, start with the one microgram, then based on the patient's uh, tolerance, uh, hemodynamic uh, tolerance, then you can go on increasing. Um, but don't rapidly increase because it takes some time to produce a hemodynamic perturbations. So slowly from increase from one to two, two to three, like that. If you are using a MOSH model, I don't use commonly a MOSH model in case of adults, only a few cases I use. A MOSH model regularly, I use a, a FX site targeting Snyder model. So, modified MOSH model is also available where K0 is 1.2 liters per minute instead of 0.26 liter per minute, which is uh, present in a regular MOSH model. So, which decreases the uh, time required to uh, equilibrate between the plasma targeting and FX site targeting. If the uh, K0 is increases 1.2 liters per minute, means amount of the drug which will be uh, uh, distributed to the effect site targeting will be faster. So instead, if the in, in regular MOSH model, it is a 0.26, it takes a longer time. Uh, so the MOSH model is uh, suitable for a plasma targeting. It is if it is a less robust patients or a patients with the critical ill or uh, more label patients, better to start with the lower concentration or use the Snyder model. Coming to a Snyder model, it adjusts some of the pa pharmacokinetic parameters uh, for age, especially with the elimination of life, it uh, uses the age uh, and also uh, the uh, constant between the different compartments. Unlike in a MOSH model, it does not, it increases linearly, the uh, all the compartment sizes will increase linearly with the weight. But in case Snyder, it also uses the age and uh, lean body mass. Lead body mass and age and gender is use, used to calculate the elimination of life, ideally suitable for FX site targeting. If you use the plasma site targeting uh, Snyder model, then the amount of the drug 
delivered to the patient will be much less and the chance of awareness will be more because the it is a uh, V1 compartment is fixed. That is almost uh, 4.2 liters. So amount of the drug delivered will be very less. So Snyder model uh, plasma targeting is not suitable. Plasma site targeting may lead to inappropriately a low concentration of drug. So this is a graphical representations of uh, uh, various model of uh, the uh, profile uh, model. The, you can see this is a Marsh model. Uh, the, the plasma targeting, when you identify a plasma targeting, there won't be any uh, plasma overshoot. The target and the set target and the achieved target will be remains and the, uh, the effect site will take a longer time. You can see this, this is a Marsh model. So he, the, here the plasma targeting Snyder model, which is not used regularly because it produces inappropriately very low concentration of a, a drug in a plasma. So the Marsh model, you can see this is a, a modified Marsh model. Uh, where the plasma overshoot is there. This is effect site targeting. So amount of drug uh, which is delivered to the plasma is also very high because of plasma overshoot. Then the uh, time taken to reach the effect site will be faster. Uh, coming to a Snyder model, so there is a plasma overshoot. The drug delivered initially will be very high. Then the uh, time taken to reach the effect site targeting also uh, very fast. So. Snyder is uh, uh, for a postgraduate level, Snyder model is suitable for uh, FX site targeting, Marsh model is suitable for uh, uh, plasma targeting. Uh, the pet fusion and cataria models I already discussed, both use a weight as a key uh, patient characteristics because uh, uh, plasma uh, compartment and a V2 and V3 compartment also increases with the weight and the age of the patient. So uh, it uses the weight as a main criteria to uh, uh, determine the V1, V2, and V3. The Cataria model is uh, validated to use in a patient between the age uh, 3 to 16 years with a minimum weight of 15 kg. The PET fusion model is a variant of a Morse kinetic model. Uh, it is between the 1 to 16 years of age uh, and also uses the weight to calculate the elimination constant that is K10. So nowadays, uh, uh, even Elevelt model has uh, come up. It can be used uh, uh, from uh, 27 post. Uh, gestational age to 27 to uh, any age uh, maybe uh, maybe 88 uh, years of age it can be used and uh, it can be used as low as 1 kg but these are not suitable for uh, such a low weight pet fusion and cataria models are not suitable for such a low weight minimum weight is required is 15 kg in case of a cataria so coming to a newer model that is allometric uh, model which is based on the pharmacokinetic as well as a pharmacodynamic uh, uh, calculations. So, which is uh, developed based on the uh, uh, bispectral index. So, this is studied on uh, nearly 1033 patients. It has studied and one, uh, tenth, more than 10,000 uh, uh, profile samples were taken uh, to calculate the what is the exact amount of drug is required to produce a, a, a determined effect site uh, 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 effect uh, in a patient. This is how the effect is calculated based on the bispectral index. And uh, suppose if you are given a four microgram of a drug, then they will at the four microgram, what will be the depth of anesthesia? Then they will calculate, and it will be it is it was calculated in a varied uh, group of uh, patients from a neonate to an elderly with the high BMI patients. So the, uh, this is calculated both for anesthesia as well as a sedation. The model should be likely to be useful for target control infusion in anesthesia and sedation in a population in a wide range of. Uh, age and body weight because uh, regular models which are uh, used uh, nowadays that is a Snyder or a Marsh models which are not suitable for a body mass index which has more than um, uh, 42 in case of male and 37 in case of uh, female but uh, allometric model can be used for higher body mass index also. Mm. Coming to a, a, a ramifentalin, which is uh, a Raminto model is commonly used. We don't use because the ramifentalin is not available. The Minto model is applicable to wide range of patient and characteristic. Age is uh, used for a calculation of pharmacokinetic parameter. A gender specific lean body mass is calculated and used to uh, tune some of the parameters to the patient. The Minto model uh, for a ramifentalin can be used uh, in a, a FX uh, targeting mode, but normally it is used for a uh, plasma site targeting, but nowadays they are uh, based on the certain EEG parameter they use uh, for uh, FX site targeting, which is not suitable. So Minto model is ideally suitable for uh, plasma site targeting.
Uh, Dexmedetomidine is just a more upcoming and promising drug, which is commonly used for a sedation in case of a, a Nora settings or a bronchoscopy. So Dexmedetomidine was delivered through a TSA by a DAC model. Uh, so now most of the uh, pumps, newly coming up pumps are uh, having a, a DAC models. This pharmacokinetics of Dexmedetomidine are best described by the three compartment model, as I described. Uh, previously, height is the best predictor of a target setting. FX site concentrations were a model from a bispectral index, uh, both for sedation and anesthesia. But there are a controversy whether the bispectral index can be used for the uh, determine the effect of a dexmedetomidine. <clears throat> that is yet to be validated. So, what is the disadvantage of a target control infusion? So there are multiple assumptions. K0 calculation, how to calculate the K0? That is the, how, how much time to uh, uh, time required to uh, equilibrate between the FX site and the plasma site. That is based on initially based on the clinical parameters, like uh, how much time the patient uh, time taken to lose the consciousness. Now the bispectral index or uh, entropy was used to calculate this thing. But there are multiple assumptions to calculate the K0. And then the fast and slow compartment equilibrium, again, there is a uh, uh, fast and slow compartment. These are some assumptions that, that there is a constant. Uh, this is not precisely uh, validated how much time take to uh, equilibrate between the fast compartment and the slow compartment. And elimination uh, of life, uh, elimination, how much time it takes to eliminate and what are the elimination. There are the, uh, the elimination, uh, somewhat depends on the different enzymes or uh, some are depends on the liver, some depends on the renal system. So, so elimination is not validated uh, exactly. So these are made based on certain assumptions. The, then there is a potential source of error. So we need to use the closed loop uh, target control in, uh, infusion, especially when we are using a, uh, a neuromuscular blocking agents. The awareness during a, a TBA TCA is uh, more common when the neuromuscular blocking agents are used. So the uh, uh, Euro European Society of uh, Intravenous, Intravenous Anesthesia recommends that. So whenever you are using a TBA TCA with a neuromuscular blocking agents, use a, any form of a depth of anesthesia. So there is a prolonged uh, uh, concurrent hypotension and low bispectral index associated with the increased uh, uh, mortality and uh, increased hospitalization, especially after the cardiac surgery. So. Uh, use the bispectral index. So never make the isoelectric uh, bispectral index should not be a, a, a isoelectric because if it becomes isoelectric in especially in a patient elderly patient, so it leads to a increased chances of postoperative delirium. We have seen that uh, the if you uh, reach for a brief period, there is there is a burst suppression, then there is an increased chance of uh, um, uh, delirium postoperatively. So avoid a burst suppression, especially in elderly. So maintain between around 30 or 40, preferably 40 uh, to 60 in case of anesthesia and around uh, 60 to 80 uh, uh, by spectral index score for a sedation. Uh, so don't decrease less than 30. Uh, so already I've discussed what is a time uh, contact sensitive off time. So you can see this uh, a very important thing, this uh, contact sensitive off time for various tracks. You can see this uh, diagonal pump is a very high uh, uh, contact sensitive of time. Even if you have brief infusion, uh, even less than half an hour uh, infusion, so time taken will be a more than uh, 200 minutes to decrease by half. Uh, off. So similarly, the fentanyl, where the, some of the uh, centers, they use the fentanyl infusion. We should not be using the fentanyl infusion. Um, uh, so it should be given either uh, intermittent boluses because the contact sensitive of time of fentanyl is also very high. Uh, again, thiopentin is not suitable. Uh, it is contact sensitive off time is also very high. So if you infuse for six to seven uh, hours, it takes more than uh, 200 minutes to decrease by 50%. So some of the drugs which are ideal for a, a target control infusions are dexmedetomidin, midazolam, uh, su uh, sufentanil, alfentanil, and most importantly, the, the remifentanil, which decreases very rapidly because of a, uh, the mode of uh, metabolism it undergoes. And profile and ketamines are also very suitable uh, for a uh, target control infusion or a, a TIVA. So other likes like thiopentum, fentanyl, and digipam should not be used uh, for a pro infusion. It can be given intermittent uh, bolus, especially the fentanyl. It should be given uh, intermittent uh, doses when you are achieving a analgesia with the fentanyl. So coming to a, a national audit project uh, of accidental awareness under uh, general anesthesia. So the, what they have observed is in these cases, the commonest cause of uh, uh, accidental awareness during general anesthesia is especially in a paralyzed patient. 
So because of an inappropriate low dose infusion, usually as a fixed rate infusion, more than three quarters of 28 cases of accidental awareness during general anesthesia were considered to be uh, preventable. So, so they recommend all anesthetists need to be skilled in administration of intravenous anesthesia. And these results suggest that is not currently the case. Means even in a <coughs> European settings, the regular training of postgraduate, uh, especially uh, the administration of uh, uh, intravenous infusions of anesthetists was uh, re not regular. So these po postgraduates and uh, uh, junior resident has to be trained how to administer the uh, target control infusion or even without a target control infusion, TIVA, how to administer the TIVA. It should be the regular practice in a postgraduate program. So which TCA pump to buy? Uh, this depends on the microprocessor with the pharmacokinetic uh, software infusion pump, which delivers uh, up to a, a maximum rate of 1,200 ml per hour. So because uh, we need to achieve a faster induction, the visual and audible safety algorithm should be uh, present. Otherwise, uh, their disconnections or kinking cannot be identified. We should uh, be able to calculate uh, infusion every 10 seconds and uh, make in India with the cost uh, uh, lesser cost nowadays available, we can be uh, purchased. To summarize, uh, TCA is a simple uh, machine will do the most of the work, but we should understand the basic pharmacokinetic, how this uh, target control infusion works without understanding the pharmacokinetic and the pharmacodynamic. So using the TCA pump will make the uh, things worse. So this is based on the three component model. That is a bed principle. Effect site, we should understand what is the effect site targeting, what is the plasma site targeting. We should understand what is the contact sensitive of time. We should choose the drug which are suitable, which has a lower the contact sensitive of time. So allometric model is a future of a target control infusion, which considers many, uh, many of the uh, parameters. Apart from a, a age and weight, it considers other parameters also. So, uh, uh, thank you. I'm, I think most of the things I've covered, basic part of the pharmacokinetic I covered. Thank you uh, once again, Edward, sir, and online anesthesia team. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you Shiva. You have wonderfully covered the complex model in a simple way to understand for the postgraduates. Uh, we will take up the questions. There are a few questions in the chat box. Most yes, of the sir. questions they have answered in our presentation. So, the what side they are asked oh, what is the key difference between the Marsh model and central model. You can say it in one word. Uh, the, the Marsh model is actually there are uh, uh, the variable parameters are V1, V2, and uh, V3. This varies with the weight. And it is based, Marsh model is suitable for a, a plasma targeting. And uh, 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 Snyder model is suitable for FX tar targeting. And V1 is fixed there, where V1 is almost 4.12 or 4.2 liters. So it is suitable for uh, uh, FX side targeting, where uh, plasma overshoot will be there. So that is the key difference. So Snyder should not be used for uh, plasma targeting. It may produce accidental awareness if you use the Snyder model for plasma targeting. Just we are uh, recollecting what you are uh, told in the presentation, sir. Don't take it up. So, <laughs> so what is the what is the special consideration for the pediatric patients regarding the uh, volume of the compartment distributions? So, sir, basically the initial uh, age, the volume increases, the, especially V1, V2 uh, increases linearly. So, we have to consider the one is uh, uh, when we are uh, setting a target, we, what we do is we set a higher target in case of pediatric patients. So, uh, we may not set uh, straight forward with a, a six microgram, but we set a four microgram. Then we see that uh, whether the adequate uh, depth has been reached. There is a controversy whether the beast can be used in a uh, pediatrics also. Then we, what we do is we increase the uh, target to a higher target, suppose four, then we can increase to a six. So usually what I have seen is uh, the based on the practical experience, we require higher target in case of uh, pediatric patients uh, because the V1 compartment is much larger uh, 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 per uh, weight. So that's why we need to give a higher, uh, uh, set the higher target. So you said uh, depending upon the depth of the anesthesia. So what are the yes. monitors you will use for this TCE pumps? What are the monitors? So usually what we do, uh, uh, I use uh, both the uh, bispectral index and the uh, entropy uh, to assess the depth of anesthesia. Not all the cases we use, but especially uh, patients who have a, 
suppose elderly patients, pediatric patients, or patients who are uh, uh, less robust. And when we are using uh, neuromuscular blocking agents, we try to use uh, depth of anesthesia monitors. So other uh, fit patients where the uh, uh, where uh, you regularly you set a certain target like a four microgram of profile. So you know that these patients uh, there is a no, there is not much marked deviation in the uh, target uh, concentration required. Required. We don't use regularly, but what I suggest is initial days, we have to use uh, depth of anesthesia monitors so that we we'll come to know that what patient, some of uh, some patients we have seen that two microgram is sufficient to maintain the uh, BIS uh, count of around 40, so especially patients with hypothyroidism, elderly patients, debilitated patients. Sometimes they require a six microgram. So initially to learn those things, we need to use the monitors, the depth of anesthesia monitor, like either uh, BIS or uh, entropy. So the, these monitors are mandatory for using TC. It's entropy and this anything. Yes, yeah, especially when you use the neuromuscular uh, blocking agents and uh, patients with uh, 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 deviated pharmacokinetics, uh, patients with the alcoholic or patients with the obese, uh, it is ideal to use these uh, monitors. Okay, sir. For, uh, is, there, is there any manual regime for the infusion of the propofol? Yeah, I have mentioned that there is a Bristol uh, 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 regime is there where uh, we can use, uh, start with the 1 mg per kg uh, bolus dose. Uh, that is to fill the uh, central compartment. There's a V1 compartment. Then in the first 10 minutes, we start with 10 mg per kg. Uh, that will equilibrate to a fast uh, uh, vessel-rich compartment. Not to equilibrate, to reach a vessel-rich compartment. Then we use for 8 mg uh, per kg uh, per minute for uh, next 10 minutes, then followed by 6 mg per kg per minute. But I have told there is there is a disadvantage with uh, this Bristol model also because uh, the variation in body composition. So you said there is a Mento model for relief and delay. Yes. They are yes. using the same concept of propofol model or do it's a different model? Uh, the Minto model, it is different from a uh, profile model. There is a slight difference because uh, we can't calculate the depth of anesthesia. They use the EEG for a Minto models also, but it's not suitable to calculate the analgesic uh, parameters of uh, this thing. But there are certain, uh, it, based on the age, uh, the concentrations are killed. Even though lean body may also uh, consider. So another, what uh, Minto models advantage is the contact sensitive off time is uh, very low uh, with a ramifentanil. Even if you stop, uh, at the last suture, the patient will recover faster. So Minto model, it considers, it is suitable for plasma targeting. One is. Second, nowadays they are using FXI targeting, but usage of FXI targeting with regular EEG may, be, uh, uh, may, may not be, I don't uh, agree with it because the analgesic parameters and uh, anesthetic parameters are entirely different. So then uh, the other question is, how do you fix the FXI concentration, sir? Is it the same for all patients? Are you no, no, no. for the comorbid diseases, patients with the various no. uh, uh, This requests effect side targeting. What we do is uh, uh, the patients with uh, not marked variation in a, uh, suppose a 40-year-old, 30-year-old fit patient, we generally we start with a 4 microgram. Then we see a 4 microgram of a effect side targeting. Then we see the depth of anesthesia. Suppose uh, if the patient requests uh, a little higher dose, then we increase to a five microgram, whatever the target we require. So in other patients where the patients were debilitated are uh, patients uh, who are uh, uh, bleeding patient, those patients, what we do is we set a target to a lower concentration from this. Uh, most of the times we start with a one microgram. Then I see the, what is the hemodynamic preparations? What is the uh, depth of anesthesia? Then gradually increase, then one, then two, then three, like that. What is the required? Uh, target to maintain the depth of anesthesia, then we also should consider the hemodynamic perturbations, that is whether the hypertension is happening in these patients. These things has to be considered. But regularly fit patient, ASA1 patient, if you set a 4 microgram, then you can uh, increase uh, effect site uh, targeting based on the depth of anesthesia. Usually they require 4 to 5 microgram uh, of a profile concentration. Uh, thank you very much, sir. You uh, almost answered all the questions in the chat box. For thank you, sir. Thank explanation you. And also, you were a wonderful presentation. Thank you once again. Then we will Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you, okay. sir. Thank you. So we will move on to the second topic. 
So the second of is Diva Practical Approach Drugs and Updates by Tusa Jyotsi. He is a consultant anesthesiologist. He is a HOD of Baroda Kidney Institute and a Lithotrophy Center of Baroda. He is a private practicing anesthesiologist. He has done more than 50,000 cases. He is almost interested in teaching. He is a national and state level speaker and his infographics are famous among the postgraduates and appreciated at international level. He was an invited faculty for the, the NISORA for making infographics. He is the founder of TIVA and uh, Opioid Free Anesthesia Society in Facebook groups. He is pioneer in smartphone anesthesia practice and artificial intelligence. I don't know how he has passed his time for teaching among his hectic private practice. It shows his dedication towards teaching. Welcome you online to online anesthesia platform, sir. Over yes. to you, sir. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Edward, and very good morning to all of you. Can you see my slides? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, I am totally a private practitioner, and teaching is my patience. I started my TIVA practice since last 25 years, and now I am uh, living with TIVA, eating with TIVA, and I want to update all, all anesthesiologists around the world to promote the TIVA. And you know, the TIVA will be the norm in, in a second then generation and within 25 years, the TIVA will be the leading in all anesthesia practice. So my topic today is TIVA practical approach, drugs and updates. So I want to ask you some questions to the audience. How many of you are giving TIVA and TCA TIVA? What is your definition of TIVA? What is your experience of TIVA? And will you give TIVA in your practice? Because these questions are very much necessary when you are hearing the lecture of TIVA and especially nowadays TCA TIVA because there are so many myths and misconceptions about how to give TIVA and what will be the definition of TIVA. Tushar, so your voice is very low. So my lecture, lecture roadmap is history, definition, types of TIVA, indications, advantages, disadvantages, TIVA drugs and TIVA combination, which drugs we are using and which are the drugs will be combined for the uh, uh, starting people, those who are who wants to learn the TIVA practice. Methods of giving TIVA, like syringe infusion pump, target control infusion, Dr. Siv Kumar has told, I have created my own infusion that is Tushar Chox infusion and closed loop systems. TIVA in different groups of patients, which are the patients which we, we can give TIVA and TCA TIVA. Which surgical procedures we can do in TIVA? Which are the checklist of the TIVA? And what are the monitoring we are using? And some of the updates in TIVA and we are using the TIVA apps which we, it will be useful in your practice. And what will be the future? What is your take home message and what is your opinion about TIVA? So if you see the history of TIVA, the people consider that okay, this uh, anesthesia started 175 years before, but TIVA is even older than that. In 1656, the injection of opium was given in Oxford in the dog. And since 1936, the TIVA was the changing year in our anesthesia practice where the pentothel has changed the, because of the invention. And then if you see then ketamine came in 62, this is the golden jubilee of the ketamine in 2022. Then propofol was invented. Propofol has sent second change in the second change in the TIVA practice. Then ramifentanil came in 1996. Then dexmedetomidine and newer modern newer drugs came in the ramimizolam in 2022. And in next few years we will get a ciprofol. It's a new agent added by the Chinese company that is in 22. It will change the practice of again TCA TIVA and TIVA. So from 1930 to 2020, TIVA is coming very much popular and it is going even ahead than the inhalation anesthesia. So my definition of TIVA, if you see that total intravenous anesthesia, it is a technique of general anesthesia, which uses a combination of our drugs, given exclusively by the intravenous group without the use of inhalation agent, even gas anesthesia, including nitrous oxide. But here, oxygen, compressed air or helium are exception. And see this word, TIVA is used in induction as well as maintenance of anesthesia. Some schools of the thought that TIVA is only for the maintenance part. It is not like that. So TIVA is becoming popular since last two years in Corona time because there is a re-emergence of TIVA because gas gives rise always side effect. This is my statement. So what are the types of TIVA? TIVA is given with the endotracheal tube, without endotracheal tube, with supraglottic airway, without supraglottic airway, with nasal airway, with the 
with uh, with with oral airway or without this uh, all airway instruments and some of the indications you can give tiva in any set of the patient from geriatric to pediatric and from ot to outside ot at any medical specialty these are the basic tiva indication so almost in all surgical procedures survey procedures patients is having a post operative nausea and vomiting risk day care surgery even nora situation that is a anesthesia given outside the operation theater anesthesia in non operative locations even malignant hypersusceptibility susceptibility patients remote location the main thing is coming tca ty in neurosurgery in cardiac surgery and even in the another type of the systems even patient choice is also even i have taken my tiva in my spine surgery tca tiva in two years back and i was very comfortable even if you transfer your patient from one environment to another environment between one operation theater to another operation theater to or one operation theater to ambulance to other way in hospitals then also tiva is very useful so what are the tiva advantages except for the slight prick in the arm the patient is unaware of the having an anesthetics the prima facie principles of giving tiva is you must have the vein you must take the vein so there is no mask over the face no sudden concentration of gas or vapor no risk of hemorrhage very low incidence of post operative delirium and in this eras uh, eras um, yug um, age the less chances of emergence phenomena there should be no smells of volatile agent because we are not using any inhalation agent reduce stress response i know when i was practic- practicing 20 years back without this uh, uh, vaporizers like goldman vaporizer at the end of the day i was having a stress and i was the smell were coming from the my clothes when i go to home and i was stressed i was a little bit sleepy but now this the this all this thing has changed because of the newer anesthesia uh, workstations and this uh, tiva tc agents patient wakes up like it's from the natural sleep less operating room pollutions so it's a planet well being also with the tc tiva and you mind well that in space also there are three anesthesia given by my israeli friend paul zilberman who is who was anesthetist he is anesthetist and he has given tiva in even space anesthesia in war situation ambulance transfer and unexpected condition you do not think accept tiva so tiva favorable tiva is favorable to almost all systems like immune system cardiovascular even oncology renal gastroenterology neuro central nervous system you name the system and tiva is favorable but the coin has two sides there are some disadvantages but i don't consider that is a main culprit of this using tiva or tca tiva first is pain on injections injection is re- irreversible disposable may be costly nowadays disposables are Uh, not that much costly when i was looking back 10 years back incidence incidence of awareness if you are not giving properly or if you are not using any monitors undetected error or in delivery devices not having another apparatus to carry on the tiva possibility of the not finding vein sometimes if you if you are not able to find the vein then you cannot start your tiva practice shallow respiration risk of bacterial contaminations and difficulty in knowing blood concentration sometimes we have learned in our anesthesia residency program that okay, what is anesthesia circle here tiva completes the anesthesia circle with the hypnosis sympathetolysis amnesia hemodynamic stability immobility and neuromuscular blockade you have all the liberty to have these effects so what else you required in tca tiva or tiva practice in your practice which are the drugs we are using in tiva practice with their advantages almost all the drugs like benzodiazepine narcotics propofol ketamine all induction agent dexamethasone even ketamidate muscle relaxants and other adjuvants like diclofenac paracetamol i will come later in all the drug list they are easily available in almost all operation theaters and outside operation theaters and all these drugs can be given to any subset of the population from pediatric to geriatric with easily titrable dose so we have ample of liberty to use tiva drugs instead of uh, only one inhalation if you go long back uh, in this uh, inhalation agent then after sevoflurane there is no invention of this any inhalation agent but this tiva drug is a continuous process they are inventing one by one drug every two years so these are the tiva drugs these are the anesthesia drugs was invented in last 175 years 
almost 60 drugs, 66 drugs are invented. Out of that, we are using 45 drugs in our practice, including inhalation agent, local anesthetic agent, but we have a, uh, a chance to use TIVA, TIVA drugs, almost all TIVA drugs in our OT, and there are more than 25 drugs in our weapon. So what is ideal in TIVA drug? Rapid onset of action, rapid and predictable recovery, potent and lipid soluble, even it is water soluble, and it is stable in any solution, chemically compatible with other drugs. No perivascular sloughing, not absorbed by any plastic, does not promote bacterial growth, devoid of any side effect and low cost. And my most important thing is, I consider ideal TIVA drugs, it can be mixed two TIVA drugs or even almost three TIVA drugs can be mixed with each other and we can give these drugs to any sort of the patients without any complications. So these are the TIVA tool drugs box which I put in my OT and even outside OT. That is all benzodiazepine, propofol, ketamine, dexmedetomidine, dexamethasone, magnesium sulfate, all muscle relaxants, opioids, lidocaine, clonidine, diclofenac, and paracetamol. Almost all these drugs are available in, in any practice of my OT, even outside OT, and any situation when I am giving anesthesia. So which are the IV anesthetic drugs? The first drugs we are using in TIVA or TCA TIVA is propofol. It's a prime drug. I called it is a prince of TIVA kingdom in all TIVA practice and combinations. Initially, TIVA dose is 2 to 2.5 milligram per kilogram if you are using as a bolus dose with induction. In any mixtures of TIVA, like if you are combining with ketamine or if you are combining with hiranian narcotics, then you give 1 milligram per kilogram. This is all this without TCI. And in infusion, usually we give 6 milligram per kilogram. And in all over the world, TCI TIVA practice, propofol and ramifentanil is the most ideally used this combination in all over the world. And on right side, there is a TIVA dose and TCI dose with the sedation, light pain, laryngeal mass, moderate pain, surgical anesthesia, intubation, strong pain, and deep anesthesia. So first thing in that, when you are using, when you are practicing TCI TIVA, then your primary drug is only propofol. Without, uh, without propofol, TCI TIVA is not exist. I have created, Dr. Edward has said that I have created all the infographics. So this is a propofol infographics. I will share with him and uh, you will get it afterwards. Ketamine. Ketamine is the most popular drug among the all anesthesiologists across the globe since last 50 years. There is one survey done just five years back with all the anesthetists across the globe, which is the most popular drug in the anesthesia armament. I'm telling most popular. Then ketamine was the 49%. I called it is a brahmaster for the anesthesiologists in TIVA. When TCA TIVA was not there just two, three years back in my practice, then I was using even today also I am using ketamine in my practice as a sole um, combination with TIVA um, mixtures. It's a key role and main drug in TIVA. It's a based analgesic, amnesic and opioid sparing effect. It's an MD antagonist. Does not, it does, uh, dose is less than 0.5 milligram, but you can give as a sole anesthetic agent with some of the propofol or ketamine up to 1 to 1.5 milligram. It has got an anti-hyperalgesic and anti-tolerance effect also. And it is a very good um, uh, indication even at, at the withdrawal of the narcotics when you are uh, giving ketamine. Ketamine TIVA, it produces rapid hypnosis and profound analgesia. It can be mixed with all types of anesthetic and narcotic in a single series. So this is the beauty of ketamine. So it can be mixed by midazolam. It can be mixed with the propofol. It can be mixed with the dexmedetomidine, and it can be mixed with the another two, three drugs in the pipeline like ciprofol and ramimizalon. It is a very much established drugs for the TIVA mixer. This is ketamine infographics. One of the most uh, used drugs in nowadays is dexmedetomidine. I call dexmedetomidine as the most ideal anesthetic agent nowadays. Dexmedetomidine has got an analgesic and anesthetic effect, hypnotic, sedative. And it is 7 to 10 times more potent than the clonidine. It is a most ideal anesthetic agent. It has got even opioid sparing effect. And you know, in pediatric TIVA, without TCI, Dexcate combination is becoming very popular in pediatric TIVA or opioid free anesthesia. And you find in PubMed more than thousands of articles about this Dexcate since last two years. 
here the patient is sedated but arousable so it is i called it is a conscious sedation or physiological sedation now how this physiological sedation is working under the dexmedetomidine i will give the one of the examples when you are sleeping in the midnight and you have a urge of going to washroom you go to the washroom and come back to your bed and you again sleeping so that is the way the dexmedetomidine also give rise to sleep it is called a conscious sedation or arousable sedation or physiological sedation this drug is becoming widely popular in all over the world in all anesthesia all anesthesia practice the dose raising dose is given 0.5 to 1 microgram and maintenance infusion is 0.6 to 0.7 microgram per kilogram per hour and i told you that in pediatric tiva dex is with ketamine is combination is mostly preferred and i used to give even in my ent practice urology practice or even gastro practice with na initially i was using ketofol that is a ketamine propofol but now i have switched over since last two years to cat dex dex cat this is dex medicomedin infographics now i am promoting since last 3 years dex medicomedin in use of the all the private practitioners in my area and i have created one this prayer for all people what dex medicomedin says hey buddies i am dex medicomedin my pet name is dex i am your complete friend to play with you in all games iv ia moral spinal and nasal but my favorite game is intravenous with all stages sedation hypnosis analgesia and anesthesia i love to play with the small babies to old age players so okay, this dexmedetomidin can be given to all age groups but during playing with me be careful i am very delicate fall down with the weak players because it causes hypotension as well as bradycardia i can also play in indoor stadium it can be given in icu patients continuously for 48 hours not more than that i am always available to play with you and allowed me to play with others let us play enjoy with me and don't neglect me so i will recommend all the listeners in youtube and this forum to use dexmedetomidine in your practice frequently one of the drugs which i am using uh, very occasionally in my cardiac patient that is etomidate it is a very cardio stable drug used mainly in hemodynamically compromised patients and it is given in sedation tiva icu and in geriatric patient in the dose range from 0.1 to 0.3 mg per kg body weight this is etomidate uh, this uh, infographics recently since last 6 months i have started with etomidate plus ketamine combinations for at least 10 patients and i am very happy some of the opiates we are using in tiva practice that is fentanyl and remifentanil i am not using fentanyl in my practice but remifentanil is not available now this my practice is optiva practice that is opiate free total intravenous anesthesia practice because of my since last two years of corona practice fentanyl is given is a 3 mg per kg over 30 seconds followed by 2 microgram then 1.5 microgram then 1 mg per kg which was i was practice now remifentanil is dr siu told that it is not available in india but we are fortunate within 6 months two companies are coming in india to with the remifentanil it is available as a 1 mg per vial 2 mg per vial and 5 mg per vial any days initial dose is very 1 microgram per it's a very short acting drug and a very beautiful drug you see all over outside india all the countries more than 190 countries are using this remifentanil in the, uh, all the anesthetic but in india we don't have this molecules so we are not able to use but in tcit where remifentanil is remifentanil propofol is the leading in this practice this is fentanyl infographics this is remifentanil infographics and the, the new agent i told you in 2020 by japan this remimazolam came in pipeline and this is the third situation in 775 years in tiva that first in 1936 where the pentothal was introduced in 1977 when the propofol was introduced and in 2020 when the remimazolam introduced in this world it has changed the anesthesia practice it is also called as a switch on switch of anesthesia with remimazolam and it has got a benzodiazepine and opiate property together it will be available i don't know when it will be available otherwise rest of the countries in all over outside india like japan usa china and non european countries it is available but mind well it is when it will be available it is will be 1800 rupees for one ampule so very much costly some of the adjuvant tiva drugs i am using that is midazolam 0.05 mg per kg now i have stopped using these drugs 
but the thing you should uh, uh, remember that total dose should not be more than 10 milligrams. Midazolam infographix. One of the versatile drugs, old wine in a new bottle, that is magnesium sulfate. It's a main agent giving TIVA or even in any practice, like if you are giving spinal anesthesia, even any short of anesthesia, I will recommend to use magnesium sulfate. It's an analgesic adjuvant useful in patient with recent total internal. It reduces propofol dex and atracurium and it improves the quality of postoperative analgesia. It is available as a 2 ml ampule with 500 mg per ml and it cost is not more than 10 rupees. I called it is an intravenous oxygen because of the, see, it has got a 32 effects in the anesthesia practice, mainly with the antihypertensive, bronchodilator, antiarrhythmic, analgesic, anti seizures, anti severing, anesthetic adjuvant, antacid, and mild sedative. I called it is a, oh my God, oh. Oxygen with magnesium sulfate is a very good combination in our practice. I told you about the 32 clinical effects of the MGSO4. And this is magnesium sulfate infographics. Second drugs in adjuvant is my very uh, favorite drug is dexamethasone. I think almost all anesthesiologists across the globe, they are giving dexamethasone. At least in Indian subcontinent, I, I uh, heard that everybody is giving dexamethasone in their practice. It is widely used in TIVA as an adjuvant. It has got anti-inflammatory, prevents the, treats the post-operative nausea and vomiting. It suppresses the inflammation. It has got a good analgesic effect. And when your patient it wakes up from the anesthesia, then there is a sense of well-being, good quality of recovery. And single prophylactic dose of dexamethasone, at least six to eight, eight milligram can be given to irrespective of sex, age, and disease. And even I'm giving to even diabetic patients, there is one study was done when you give a diabetic patient this one shot of this dexamethasone of 6 to 8 milligram, then it will not increase the blood sugar more than 15 to 25 milligram in a one's uh, taste. So it's a very good friend for the uh, anesthesiologist. It has got antimatic, anti nauseatic, anti inflammatory, analgesic effect. I will recommend. To all the anesthesiologists who wants to start their TIVA practice, just give dexamethasone. Even if you are giving local blocks or TIVA or even in your monitored anesthesia care, you just give one dose of this agent. This is dexamethasone infographics. Third drug, my favorite drug is best companion for the anesthesiologist, lidocaine. Without any blinking of eyes, you give this lidocaine. It has got an analgesic, anti-hyperalgesic, anti-inflammatory, reduce the opioid analgesic consumption, anti-arrhythmic, improves the patient's outcome and decrease the aerosol and droplet during the extubation. I combine this agent, even my intubation and my extubation times. This is intravenous lidocaine. It's a very magic drug. Why I call it, it is a magic drug? Suppose in your body, like if there is a machine is there, even some car engine is there, and if your car engine is disturbed, then something is done, then it will be having a very good effect. Like if the body systems are disturbed in suppose cardiac, then lung, everything will be disturbed. Then if you give intravenous lidocaine in your anesthesia practice, then it causes a magic. It All the systems will be it uh, like it uh, uh, regularizing all their uh, uh, functions. Some of the other analgesic agents I am giving is paracetamol and diclofenaxodium. Paracetamol Frequently, I am giving to all my patients in the dose of one milli, uh, one gram infusion. It's a preemptive analgesic. It has got a opiate sparing effect. Loading dose is thirty milligram per kilogram, and very excellent adjuvant in pediatric TY and TCI. Diclofenaxodium. It is also a very good agent. Agent, but be careful in the renal, hepatic, pulmonary, and heart failure patients. The thumb rule is that if you are using these two drugs in your TY practice, then always give before the surgical incision and to inhibit the prostaglandin receptors. Once the surgeon has put the incision and then at the end of the surgery or beginner of the surgery, if you give this paracetamol or diclopinex sodium, the effect is only 50%. So my request is whenever using you are using these two agents, then always give before the surgical incision. This is paracetamol infographics. This is diclofenac sodium infographics. Now, esmolol is, esmolol is one of the good weapon in my TIVA practice. It has got an opiate sparing, gives central analgesia, 
and I called it is an emergency friend of anesthesiologist because why? I do a lot of uh, laparoscopic anesthesia and in that without anything I start esmolol infusion in my all patients because it the beauty of this agent is again it can be given with the even more than two years or up to pediatric age up to two years of age because it is given central analgesia and the main beauty is why I like this agent is simultaneously it causes bradycardia as well as means it lowers the heart rate as well as it gives hypotension. So I use this and I recommend that instead of other beta blockers, you start using Esmolol. This is Esmolol infographics. Now, I am a man of combinations. So I usually combine my all Tiva drugs. So what to understand before mixing any drugs for anesthesia? We have learned the anesthesia triangle or anesthesia prism. Then there are three components, hypnosis, analgesia, and relaxation. And any medications, any anesthesia drugs, any adjunct drugs enters this prism, they are going under the process of pharmaceutical, pharmacokinetics, pharmacodynamics, and thermodynamics with mixing with each other. If you learn these principles, then you will conquer the combination of anesthesia drugs mixtures. So the rule is not mix more than three drugs at a time. And this is a beautiful article given in Coleman, uh, Coleman Journal of Anesthesia where they have studied a combination of all the drugs with each other, like propofol. Propofol can be mixed with each other. It can be compatible. Green is compatible. Yellow is not compatible. Red is, uh, yellow is non conclusive Re Red is not compatible. And white is not tested. If I give the pro propofol and ketamine, then propofol can be compatible with all the drugs except the muscle relaxant. Ketamine can be mixed with any drugs you name it in your practice. I have created a, one of the uh, Tiva kingdom, those who wants to start their Tiva practice. Here we are the we are the king. Either we are king or queen. Our prince is propofol and the supreme commanders are ketamine and dex. Our commanders are fentanyl and ramifentanyl and others are our soldiers. So whenever you want to start your Tiva practice, here king will decide with their military battle and Tiva to whom the sense alone or in combination. So in Tiva or TCA Tiva, Prince is the first warrior to go in the battle of the Tiva practice. In Tiva maintenance, Prince with the other two supreme commander or other commanders are the base military king. If you are not using TCA muscles, then propofol with ketamine or propofol with dex or propofol with fentanyl or propofol with remifentanyl are the primary combinations we are giving. In pediatric Tiva, you know, I have started a uh, dexcate combination instead of putofol. So in the absence of uh, presence of prince, when you are not using propofol, then two supreme commanders go to the win some battles. So remember, in pediatric diva, now people have started a dexcate. These are the combination I'm using and it is universally accepted in all over India. That is first is KPD mixture. This KPD mixtures I started 10 years back with the combination of ketamine, propofol, dexmedetomidine, ketofol, ketodex, dexcat, or fentanyl propofol, remifentanyl propofol. And in South India, one of my friend is using in exclusively at uh, one of the Kerala hospital, propofol, dexmedetomidine, fentanyl, midazolam, dexmedetomidine, fentanyl, and ketomed. So these three combinations, ketofol, ketodex, ketomed is established combinations. You have to remember only that it can be combined in the uh, dose of 1, 1, 1. Either 1 milligram propofol, 1 milligram ketamine, or 1 microgram dexmedetomidine, 1 microgram dexmedetomidine combinations. And this is KPD Tiva. I have developed these mixtures just in my practice when there was no TCA machines available in, in India. And in my gastro practice, I was doing at least 10 procedures in a day. So I developed this KPD mixtures. It's a mixture of ketamine, propofol, dex. It is a mixture with the one milligram, one milligram and one microgram. Combination of all these drugs permits lower dose of each individual drugs. I use it as a bolus maintenance in short cases and it gives excellent energy and anesthesia. To, be, uh, to tell you, I have completed more than 10,000 patients with this combination. Touch wood, there was no any uh, major problem. It decreases the dose of individual stable hemodynamics. It decreases the airway complication and it gives a rapid recovery. Propofol fentanyl uh, combination we were using frequently in our older days. Here, the only 
propofol dose reduction by 50% with pro, uh, this uh, remifentanil. Now this RPT, remifentanil propofol combinations. Here the propofol dose is half, uh, reduced to half and uh, reduction is 50% and most widely used TIVA combination as Dr. Siv Kumar has told in his practice in TCI. Now how to give TIVA in your practice without TCI? TCI is one of the method to give TIVA, but which are the other methods? Either with a single drug or with a combination of drug, either with a single syringe or mixture of the drugs or with only one drug. You have a single, uh, different, different syringe with the different, different drugs. Either you give it the continuous IV infusion through the drips or with serine infusion pumps. This TCI machines or TCI pumps and one of the established method is closed loop systems, automated drug delivery through this. Here also we can give, it was developing in India by Dr. J.D. Puri. So was, was, this is one of the favorite and my favorite is also single serine TIVA. No additional systems are required, TCI or closed loop system, single serine. I am combining two or three drugs in my practice, or I put one drug for one uh, one syringe for one drug, or one other syringe for another drug. Only one syringe or uh, syringe is used for the advantage of doses, dose titration, and a single level. Here, the beauty of this is that you can practice in any medical specialty. Suppose you have you do not have hi-fi machines, or you do not have any extra monitors. At that time, you can practice in Nora situations like in gastroscopy unit, in cardiac catheterizations, or in MRI suits or radiological procedures, we can have this liberty to use single syringe TVR. Manually controlled infusion, manual dosing of anesthetic drug with fixed infusion dose rate, with syringe or with IV drip. Here I will tell you that if there are some apps are available to control the infusion rate. So I will come later in my uh, this lecture. Dr. Siv Kumar has told about the Bristol regimen. I will not go in detail. Now, people are asking me when there was PCI machine was not available in India. Now, this is available. But can we dilute propofol in any solutions? Answer is yes. The rule is you can dilute propofol in 5% glucose, 0.9% NACL, ring electrode, or DNS. The rule is that one part of the propofol and four part of the dilution. So, when TCI machine was not available, at that time I, I was preparing propofol infusion. So my method was, I was taking 100 ml of normal saline, removing 20 ml of sal uh, solution from that infusion and adding one bulb of 20 ml propofol 1%. So it comes around 100 ml. So it causes, uh, sorry, it causes two milligram per ml propofol and maintenance dose was around six milligram per kilogram. And I was not using at that time this machine also. So in 65 kg weight of patients, uh, the uh, 30 minutes, this infusion was, over. and I was preparing for one, two, three, whatever the infusions are there. In, in the maximum six hours, I had given these infusions. And it, this is from the American websites those, uh, who have established this method. Total intravenous anesthesia sets are available in the world. Now, target control infusion, Dr. Siv Kumar has told you very nicely in details. It's a infusion controlled to achieve preset drug concentration in plasma or effect site. Two type specific drug model, what he said about the Snyder or this Minto or Cartarioid perfuser and another level model that is general purpose model with all the drugs, drug softwares are available nowadays. And these are the models available in India, Acromed level, SP Medicaptain, BD. LR is PKPD and B Brown. Even China people came with a single serine TCI, double serine TCI, and three serine TCI. And he is the uh, person who has invented these TCI machines, deprefuser in their practice of TIVA, propofol TIVA, first time in the world, 1996. So, main benefit of TCI TIVA is more predictable onset and more predictable offset. Now, what Dr. Siv Kumar has told about this TCI TIVA machine in an LEVEL model. The machine will itself says that okay, when the patient will come out after extubation in how many times, let's suppose in two minutes, three minutes or four minutes. That is the beauty of TCI TIVA in your practice. Even in Glasgow, patient control sedation by TCI, like patient control analgesia. So patient control sedation by TCI is also developed by these people recently in 2022. And these are the models are available. And this is a general purpose model 
one one TCI pump for all the uh, all the drugs with different drug software. I had developed without TCI machine uh, my infusion. That what I was following since last ten years: KPD infusion, ketamine, propofol, dexamethasone, dexamethasone infusion, and propofol infusion. In the range of this, uh, what you can see. Now, closed loop anesthesia delivery system, automated total intravenous anesthesia. Here, the input is drug delivery like propofol and opioids, and output is another uh, uh, anesthesia depth monitors like evoke potential, bispectral intrac index, na narcotrain, or entropy. Why it is called a closed loop system? Because there is a input is drug delivery and output is monitor. Here, whatever the vital monitors will be uh, noted in the computer, and according to computer's command, the drugs will be delivered in the body, and the vicious cycle like goes in like that. And this is the closed loop anesthesia models available in the world. Even people have introduced the eye control RP, that is ramifentanil, propofol, auto robotic, robotic control of the T1 and clades. It is USD, US FD approved. This is the new. Things which you want to know, uh, you want to know that part. It was developed in Vancouver, and this is a pediatric anesthesiologist had developed. And even they are coming with the uh, uh, eye control RPR, that is with relaxant also. Now some of the sets of the patient like pediatric, geriatric, and obese patients. I am giving all this uh, TIVA in my practice. In pediatric TIVA, you must consider that uh, you start at least TCI TIVA. But pediatric TY is viable project, and here I told you about this Dexcat. That Dexcat is coming in a way. All pediatric induction, like ENT procedures, urology procedure, where short GA, I am giving Dexcat, and my patients are within two three hours at uh, daycare procedures. But avoid TY in neonates, TY in geriatric patients. Compared with inhalation agent, T Y is more suitable as it is less observed effect on cognitive function in all elderly patients after surgery. My golden statement for using T Y T C I or T Y in your geriatric patient is go low, go slow, and always follow if you are not using T C I machines because you give very low dose of the drug, you give very slowly, and always follow this regimen. The rule is. Multi para monitor and oxygen is must during when you are giving TIVA. I get so many patients for at least two three minutes of anesthesia, five minutes of anesthesia for geriatric patient like uh, shoulder manipulations for cystoscopies and so at that time I am giving very slowly, very uh, low and I am so TIVA practice in my geriatric uh, patients are uh, I am very happy with monitoring and oxygen. TY in obese patient. TY is an excellent method for the administering general anesthesia to obese patient also. And my, uh, my uh, uh, thing is that here I am always using scolene when I am intubating for this obese TY. No relaxation technique is not advisable. So succinamide for intubation is ideal choice in TY. Here also multi para monitoring oxygen is must. Even ASA three patients is also I can give any ASA three patient this TC or TIVA practice. TIVA can be given to seriously ill patients. Multi para monitoring and oxygen is must. And the choose uh, choose the most appropriate TIVA drugs like uh, even sometimes you must uh, you can use etomidate in these patients whether the patient is elderly or young whether the patient is obese or non obese. So surgical procedures done under TIVA. From OT to outside OT, from pediatric to geriatric, from any surgical to medical specialty. So, what else you require in your TIVA practice? Start your TIVA practice. Some of the TIVA checklist: all anesthesia drugs, airway equipments, oxygen, multi-para monitors are must be for giving TIVA. And ensure no leakage from cannula and patients' IV cannula is always visible during surgery if possible. It was very much uh, means uh, I have seen in Corona time also that uh, when I was giving TIVA. See, there was a reemergence of TIVA. One of my article came in Indian Journal of Anesthesia when I started giving TIVA in Corona patients, and it has become a very popular. So we we I was blessed with this TIVA practice in that time. Series should be labeled with drug name, date, and concentration. I am very particular about the labeling of these all my TIVA drugs. Infusion should line should be checked every fifteen minutes. The infusion set through which TIVA is delivered should have a lure lock connector. 
it is just not like that okay, you just uh, put in iv sets and went from one end to each end but you have to screw it if bc is used check placement before and after surgical draping and at the end ensure all tubing iv cannula which had tiva drugs by any method first to prevent the inadvertent bolus in the ward some of the tiva monitors which i want to take see i am a old generation anesthetist my practice is 32 years i consider myself as a best and best monitor as an anesthesiologist so whatever the monitors comes in my practice but still i am the best monitor as myself so for tiva practice you must your ear ear and your uh, eyes should be open you should see when you are giving tiva loss of response for shaking and shouting loss of hemodynamic response absence of tachycardia and when you are you are using machines then must use multi para monitor bi spectral index evoc potentials and process eg monitor even narco train even entropy and people have started another monitors like nol monitors and qcon qnox all monitors are coming as a nsc depth monitor so tiva has become more popular in practical and possible due to two main reason first is the advanced knowledge of pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics properties of the drugs such as propofol ketamine dexamethasone and newer short acting opiates making them suitable for intravenous administration here i want to tell you when tci machine was not there then in at that time tiva was practiced by all the drugs but now the tiva is with propofol the only drug where available was propofol and little bit uh, remifentanil since last two years means dexamethasone ketamine even this uh, another narcotics and even they started with midazolam and everything tci machines are available for these drugs also so second new concepts in pharmacokinetics modeling coupled with the advance in the technology of infusion pumps which allows the use of algorithms such as serine infusion pumps target control infusion and closed loop system the first generation tci machines are now over now second and third generation tci machines are developed and still the propofol with remipentanil is rolling all over the world some of the tiva apps i want to tell you i tiva this is do tiva with your smartphone in volumetric pumps in a pharmacokinetic manner then iv calculator infusion when you are not using your tiva tci tiva machines then infusion calculator nss software and this is the only books textbooks are available in the nss armament train by epsilon that is target control in, uh, infusion and these books as are available with me in software copy i will uh, give it to dr edward and you will get it from him so my uh, uh, downline is down statement is ty is in fact patient friendly surgeon friendly anesthesiologist friendly economically friendly environmentally friendly productivity friendly so this is how it is used and ty will be a norm in future practice in future auto ty through artificial intelligence and metaverse with the help of tci and bs are available that is a very wide topic when i have seen with my friends from israel that how he has given tci tiva in space dexamethasone as tci model by hollywood and dick launched in 2020 vapor my my dream is that like vaporizer syringe uh, syringe pumps and tci system should be integrated in nss of oxygen tiva will be a norm in new normal and tiva will rule in all nss of practice by techniques by 2030 now people will came in the like jack knife uh, swiss jack knife all in one tc at uh, tc and closed loop anesthesia two machines simultaneously and even if you are tired and if you want to play with uh, your tc pump then there is a screen available on the and they have developed the screens and you can play any game with this your tci machines also tc pump only with your pump this your jack uh, this today i am i am facing this type of the my complex theater with wires gadgets and monitors and everything i am fed up with this type of practice so my dream is that i should come with the future nss of oxygen i should have one only one cabinet where there is only one button starting with all different alarms and everything whenever i want my patient to put on a slip mode then i will put i will 
start that button and when i want to awake that patient i will put that machine that button on the awake mode and all the monitors vaporizers drug tank then everything will be oxygen then everything will be available on this cabinet only and over and above whenever you are tired and if you want to have your coffee then you can have a vending machine also in that it can be available to elder this is my dream but it will be switch on switch off nsc machine in 2030 and you believe we will be witness of this type of the machines new drugs are coming in remimizolam already came sugamdex also came now heptiva dusitol and ciprofol they are in coming in market within 2 years so my take home message think outside the box step in your comfort zone with tci tiva and tiva with safe nsc safe surgery safe patient safe environment and safe yourself so total intravenous nsc with tci are safe alternative to the inhalation nsc with lots lots of advantage and over the later tci pumps and advanced monitor make administration of tiva easy and precise manual control infusion using regular syringe pump can be used to deliver pre calculated days doses and new intravenous hypnotics and analgesic agents with favorable pharmacokinetic properties have made tiva more popular in wide era of varying clinical scenario and nsc demands so don't think that when i will start my tiva practice or tci tiva practice just start today onwards my request is at least in your practice at least for 20% of the patient you start with tci tiva and tiva so which steps you will reach today's after this session you will tell me i want to use tiva i can't use tiva i want to use tiva how do i use tiva i will try to use tiva i can use tiva i will use tiva yes i have used tiva and tci tiva i want your first steps that is i i will use and i have used tci tiva i have created a facebook tiva group just join it there are different societies are available in the world you can be a member of this society like euro siva world siva and siva.aca.uk and within 2 to 3 months we are also forming iciva that is indian society of intravenous anesthesia with all the tci lovers in the india so always i love my tiva and tci tiva thank you thank you to sir wonderful presentation and your presentation is loaded with so much of tips for the young uh, generation of uh, post graduates and also the thank practice you, Yes, there are uh, many appreciation in the chat box also. Awesome presentation and a wonderful future dream like that. There is a uh, many comment in the chat box also for your wonderful presentation. Thank you, sir. Take the questions in the chat box, sir. Can we use the Tiva in the MRI rooms? Do we have any MRI compatible TCI pumps? Yes, MRI, MRI TCI compatible pumps are available. How they are using? Suppose they have a pump. Same pump will be used. but they have a cabinet which is compatible with the mri machines and they will put that tci pump in that uh, cabinet which is mri compatible that i had seen in this uh, ganga conference i think dr c may has also seen this and we can use tci pumps in the mri suits but you should have a, that uh, outer box which are compatible with the mri machines okay sir have you used the uh, tiva in dental and eye ophthal practices oh yes that is called a monitor anesthesia care that's what i want to tell you that tiva can be practice in any situation i am giving tiva even in my skin clinics also my skin nsc skin friends skin specialists they are calling me at least 3 to 4 nsc per month in their office procedures at that time i i do not have hi fi nsc working station so i require only oxygen and suction machines and some of the basic emergency Uh, means a uh, bag like uh, resuscitator and some of the drugs at that time tiva tiva is my friend where i can give for day care procedure so ophthalmic dental or uh, skin cleaning or taking some biopsy at office procedure even i started with the cosmetic plastic surgery plastic cosmetic surgery with the tiva tci and tiva so tiva can be practiced outside ot inside ot transfer of the patient so that is called that uh, it's a beauty of tiva So you are using everywhere the tiva. Yeah, yeah, tiva can be used with everywhere. You tell me, I can give tiva in any part of the world, any space, any building, any. I will require a little bit, except anesthesia machines. I don't have, I don't want to have vaporizers. Even without TCI, also tiva is viable. So see, uh, Edward, what is the beauty of tiva? We have ample of drugs for pediatric. We can give these drugs. 
for geriatrics, we can give these drugs with one syringe, with two, three drugs, and for one minute to even one hour anesthesia. You see this radiological suits. I'm having a very good practice in gastroenterology unit where I have had almost 10 procedures in a day. So there, Tiva, so where, uh, why I have inclined in Tiva since last 2010, that was the reason when my gastroenterology friend, he was not having NSSM machine, even I'm telling you, 20 years back. So I have to use some of the drugs which, which are favorable for me. So I have inclined to Tiva practice in 20, uh, I think 1998. And from that day onwards, I'm loving Tiva. And still, now I have anesthesia workstation also for ERCP pressure. I'm intubating with uh, gastro LMA also, but that is a newer thing. But the Tiva, uh, that is the inspiration for Tiva in my practice. Sir, you are, you are saying that you can use uh, Tiva everywhere. Everywhere. TC, they say the uh, mandatory monitor is this monitor yeah. and uh, yeah, yeah. here yeah. what monitors you will use, sir? Yes. See, uh, that also I have discussed with the one of the giants in, I will not keep the name, PCI Tiva person in the Switzerland also, where he specifically told that when you are using TCI Tiva, at that time, this monitor is compulsory. But when you are using Tiva only, that is total intravenous anesthesia without TCI, my 95% of the practice is with Tiva only. Hardly I am using 5% of my practice with TCI Tiva, where I am using this monitor. No doubt it. But when I'm using combining with my drug with dexmedromidine, propofol or ketamine, there are hardly chances of going patients under awareness or something like that. You see the, all the pharmacological uh, characteristics of all these drugs. Even my colonoscopy patients, when I'm giving uh, anesthesia and when they wake up and when I ask them, okay, how was the experience? At that time, fantastic. Even I had gone with the Tiva, Tiva anesthesia with my spine surgery and I was comfortable. I was not having any memory. So awareness is not a big uh, problem and awareness is not there when you are combined. So that is the beauty of Tiva. You can combine the drugs with the, any concentration with single syringe, one drugs, two drugs, or even you can give one drug, you can give two drugs and you can combine three drugs also. That is my practice and it was established. See, the fundamental rule of com uh, uh, this uh, combination of drugs, whenever you combine any drugs in your practice, like propofol ketamine, propofol dexmedetomidine, or whatever, you have to use these drugs mixture within six hours. Because after six hours, there is a crackling, there is a gas formations, or there is a uh, different pharmacokinetics and di uh, dynamics property disintegrations with this combination. So whenever uh, there is a beautiful article is in PubMed when they, they have come in all these drug in combinations. So uh, you cannot uh, use these drug mixtures like uh, you mix propofol and ketamine and you will use after 12 hours, not like that. You have to use immediately or within six hours. That is the rule. So that and spectrometry was done on these combinations like propofol ketamine or propofol uh, or ketamine dexmedetomidine, And there was no crackling, no separation spectrometrically, there was no difference between the color combination also. And this propofol ketamine was started in 30 years back when there was a war with, with the Iran, Iraq and America. And at that time, the one of the anesthetists from America, Barry Fradberg, who started a opioid free anesthesia practice, and he has invented ketofol. And he has given 900 patient anesthesia with only ketofol without anything in the ship on the sea wounded patients, then uh, they have gone for amputations, they have gone for the suturings and everything. So at that time, Tiva started very frequently. And in 1996, there was a change of Tiva. And since last five years, TCI Tiva. But still, I will tell you, in America, it has not FDA approved TCI Tiva. European countries have approved the TCI Tiva, but no American anesthetist is using TCI machine in their practice. But in India, According to my survey, personal survey, hardly 0.2% of the NSRs all over India are using TCI Tiva machine. And that is why myself, Dr. C. Wen, everybody is promoting TCI Tiva in all over India with the workshops and seminars and with this type of the lectures. And I'm, we are very fortunate that now people have started, uh, uh, started a TCI Tiva offices in India like Acromed, Elevate, then Bad Captain, they have offices in Delhi, Chennai. 
and these machines are average two lakhs rupees per machines. These elevated machines, and if you are go to be PKPD or LRS, they also come in this range also. So it is, uh, it is. I think uh, we can uh, take that machine TCA Tiva and start your practice. Start with TCA Tiva, then TCA Tiva, and this this monitor is also available in two lakhs rupees, around two point five Covidian in India, very small one. So these are people are asking me, okay, sir, these are the machines very costly, so we will never use this TCA Tiva. But at that time, I say that okay, in your practice, the patient is safe, then you start TCA Tiva with this monitor. Hardly takes. You ask your HOD, you ask your this uh, other people. Even in India, they have started giving in the installments also, like vaporizer. They mount the vaporizer. You use the inhalation agent. The cost of the vaporizer will be, be free. Like that, they will start this uh, with the uh, uh, this uh, dish machines also. TCIT. So my very message is very simple, Edward. Through your uh, platform, to all the NSRs, those who are hearing. Start TCA Tiva in your practice. It's a very beautiful uh, for the NSS practitioner. And when we have used, we are short of, we are loved this technique of NSS. And I'm not against the inhalation NSS. But at least you should consider this part of the. So you are saying it is going to be the feature. Yeah, okay. it is going to be feature. You see, my question is that in space, trolley is not there. At that time, in this Voyager, See, if you go to the uh, references in Google, then three NSAs are given in space, space location. At that time, Tiva was the only answer. So that is the beauty of Tiva. So that's why I'm telling you that. Uh, uh, are you using muscle relaxation along with Tiva? Yeah, yeah. Muscle relaxation is one of the part of that. But whenever you are using muscle relaxation, I will say use this monitor. This monitor is the compulsory when you are using TCA Tiva. And if you are using, but uh, some people say that uh, we are not well worth with this BCI machine also. But now in America, when you are doing Tiva practice, this is compulsory now. So in India also, within two, three years, when you are using Tiva practice, then this will be compulsory. So this will be, I'm using in my practice compulsory. And uh, since last 10 years, I'm using and comfortable. Not all patients for short surgery, I'm not using. But for uh, one of all laparoscopic surgery, all ENT major surgeries or head and neck surgeries, and I'm very comfortable with using. I put my patients around 45 to 50 of this, and I'm comfortable. Sir, what is that partial intravenous anesthesia? Is that any term called PIVA? Uh, partial intravenous anesthesia is uh, where, see, partial intravenous anesthesia means partial. Means you use inhalation agent also in that part. But the inhalation agent is in a very low concentration. That also I am using some laparoscopic anesthesia. Sometimes when when they put a troker and they insufflate the carbon dioxide, at then there is a sudden hypertension. At that time I have to start a low dose of the sevoflurane. Like that is called a partial intravenous anesthesia. That is not a TCA Tiva then or Tiva practice. So partial Piva Piva that is called Piva. Partial intravenous anesthesia is given by all these Tiva drugs and with low concentration where you can give sevoflurane or isoflurane, those you are using or desflurane. So low concentration of this inhalation agents are used in Tiva practice. So we are often use the term that monitor anesthesia care and the conscious sedation. Yeah, so, the, yeah, yeah. Monitored, yeah. Monitored anesthesia care. See, this uh, plastic surgery unit, I always give monitored anesthesia care. Suppose uh, some uh, patients are going for some removal of the wards or uh, some liposuction or something. So I give local anesthesia with uh, some of the sedation. The main principle of monitored anesthesia care is safe sedation, uh, relieve the anxiety and uh, good analgesia. That is not uh, monitored anesthesia care. Here the monitor is compulsory. And you have you have ample of drug using like benzodiazepine, propofol, ketamine, narcotics. You can use in monitored anesthesia care. Okay, sir. You in the presentation you have mentioned. Oh my God! What is the relation between oxygen and magnesium? Uh, actually, in our anesthesia practice, we learn from our residency that oxygen, oxygen, and oxygen is for the patient when we are giving anesthesia. When I started giving magnesium sulfate, 
at that time before magnesium era and after magnesium era i'll tell in my practice that when i when i was giving i was not giving magnesium sulfate in uh, my nsc practice at that time i have to give more dose my patients are waking uh, very uh, uh, some sometimes with vomiting sometimes with uh, crude way sometimes with uh, uh, not uh, irritated way and when i started giving magnesium sulfate everything was settled down means one dose of magnesium sulfate it gives almost every effect at each level and believe me when those who have used this magnesium sulfate they will experience that how so i call it is called a intravenous oxygen whenever you want to give oxygen intravenously then you can so i called and this 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 word is there in the internet also oh my ji with oxygen with magnesium sulfate so oh my ji oh my god that's all okay sir thank you very much sir. already they have started uh, requesting the your ppt presentation and okay. books are so you have mentioned yeah. that Uh, my my presentation i will share with you my all infographics i will share with you and i have created a one textbook for the students where drug infographics for the uh, uh, drug infographics special for the tci tiva and tiva that is a 46 page of the color book and it is a soft copy i will i will also give my all these uh, epsilon textbooks of uh, around 1000 pages to you and you can distribute to your all i will share to me Yeah, yeah, definitely, sir. Thank you so much, uh, to sir, for spending your valuable time, and also yes, I thank the shop master. We come to the end of this session. I thank, thank the you. organizer, sir, sorry, the sponsors, the Akrula, the Yevon Rajis, and also the Arasis TV. Thank you, Anandal, the viewers. We will meet next week with a more interesting topics. Thank you, to sir. Thank you, shop master. Thank you.